In this video, we're setting up a brand new Windows 365 link device. Hey everyone, I'm Travis and welcome back to the channel. I cover a lot of Azure cloud technologies and honestly, I don't get many chances to work with physical devices. So I was pretty excited to unbox the Windows 365 link. Today, we're going to walk through the prerequisites for the device and then check out the login experience. Before we dive in, do me a favor, hit the like button, subscribe and share with a friend or colleague. If you wanna go deeper, check out my courses on udemy.com. And a big shout out to all my channel members, your support means a lot. All right, let's start with the basics. What exactly is Windows 365 Link? It's a simple secure device built specifically for accessing Windows 365 cloud PCs. It's managed through Intune, but honestly, there's not much to manage. It's not a PC. You can't deploy apps or run scripts on it. And most of Intune's endpoint features don't apply. It's secure by default, the Link OS includes Defender's Endpoint Detection and Response Sensor. It's got TPM 2.0, Secure Boot, BitLocker, Drive Encryption, strict app control policies, and other built-in security features. There's no local admin account, no local data storage, no local apps, and security baselines are enabled right out of the box. Physically, it's small and lightweight. You get one USB-C port, three USB-A ports, an audio jack, display port, HDMI, and Ethernet. It supports Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth 5.3, and you can hook up two 4K monitors, a camera, FIDO2 passkey, and more. At first look, there are a couple things on my wish list. I've got a USB-C YubiKey, so having a USB-C port in the front would be super convenient. And I wish it supported AVD along with Windows 365, but all the Microsoft information clearly states it's purpose-built for Windows 365 cloud PCs. So that's the device. Next, let's configure it and check out the login experience. A quick note, the demo assumes you already have a cloud PC set up. We're not covering that part today. The prerequisites aren't difficult, but we will configure Intune, dynamic groups, and even run a few PowerShell commands. You'll also need elevated rights if you wanna follow along. We'll start the demo by verifying that SSO is enabled on the tenant. SSO is required for Windows 365 link. Enabling SSO for Windows 365 is the same process as AVD. I've got a video on that, check it out if you need more details. Once SSO is enabled, users get a consent prompt the first time they connect to the cloud PC, and then again every 30 days. We can hide that prompt on trusted devices. Next, we'll create a dynamic group for cloud PCs and configure those devices as trusted so they bypass that consent prompt. Link devices are managed by Intune and must be enrolled to work in an organization. So next, we'll verify users have rights to auto-enroll devices. After that, we'll create an Intune filter for Link devices and check that single sign-on is enabled for the cloud PCs in the provisioning policy. Finally, we'll log into the Windows 365 Link device and see that login experience. The goal is to get the environment ready so we can log into the cloud PC using Windows 365 Link. There are a few other recommended settings like conditional access policies, screen timeout, and time zone redirection. Stay tuned to this channel, more information is coming. All right, let's jump into PowerShell and the Azure Portal Cloud Shell to get started. Here we are in the Cloud Shell at the Azure Portal. SSO is required for Windows 365 Link. So let's first verify it's enabled in the tenant. Elevated rights are required to complete the steps in this demo. I'm logged in as a global admin for this example. You can find the source of all the commands used in this demo in the description below. I also have a full video on enabling SSO for AVD. That's the same process that needs to be done to enable SSO for Windows 365. We need to import two graph modules to get started. Let's run those. Once we've imported those modules, we'll connect to graph. We need to use a web browser to sign in. Follow the instructions to sign in. Once we're connected, we can close that page. All right, now we're logged in. Next, we need to get the object ID of the Windows Cloud Login Service Principal. 
The app ID for that is the same in all tenants. And next, we can run the command to confirm that SSO is enabled for the remote desktop protocol. And that shows true. If the output doesn't show true, you need to go through the steps to enable SSO in the tenant. It's enabled here, so we'll move on to the next step. Don't close PowerShell in the Cloud Shell just yet. We'll need to use it in an upcoming step. When SSO is enabled, users will get a consent prompt when connecting to the Cloud PC for the first time, and then every 30 days after that. The consent prompt can be hidden when the user logs into a trusted device. Next, we'll create a dynamic group for Windows 365 Cloud PCs and use that to identify trusted devices. We'll use a dynamic group so we don't have to manually add each new Cloud PC. Since we're at the Azure portal, let's open up Enter ID and go to Groups. We'll add a new group, set the group type to Security and give it a name, all Cloud PCs for this example. Add a description, Dynamic Group for Windows 365 Cloud PCs. Under Membership Type, set it to Dynamic Device and go to Add Dynamic Query. Here's where we'll create the dynamic rule. Enter property as device model, operation is starts with, and value is cloud PC. It shows the rule syntax below. Let's save the dynamic membership rule and create the group. Now this group will automatically get populated as we add and remove cloud PCs. Let's open that group. We need a couple settings for the next step. Now that we've created the dynamic group, we can use that to hide the consent prompt for users logging into those cloud PCs. The next commands are also in the AVD SSO link below. We need to create a PowerShell object for the dynamic group we just created. This requires the group object ID and the display name. That information is in the group overview page. Let's paste the PowerShell command we're gonna use in Notepad so we can update it before we run it. We'll first get the object ID and we'll update the command with the object ID. And then we need the group display name. And we'll update that. Let's copy that block of code and paste it into the Cloud Shell. And be sure to hit Enter for the last command if it doesn't run on its own. Next, we'll run the command to add the dynamic group that we just created to the target device group. This will add the devices in that group to the trusted devices so the consent prompt can be skipped. Great, that output shows the group has been added. In the next step, we need to configure our tenant to manage the Windows 365 linked devices. This step simply enables auto-enrollment so the device is enrolled in Intune when the user logs in. Let's walk through the configuration to make sure it's all in place. First, we need to verify the users can enroll the device. Let's go to the Entra Admin Center and then go to Mobility. Select Microsoft Intune, not Microsoft Intune Enrollment. We have options to scope enrollments to users. These options include none, some, or all. If it's set to none, no one will be able to enroll the device and that won't work. With some, we can select the user or group that are allowed to enroll. This will work as long as the Windows 365 users are added directly or through group membership. This example uses the MDM user group. Users for this example will need to be a member of that group or we could select all, so all users will be able to enroll. Whatever option is selected, it must be configured so the user can auto-enroll devices. If we go back to the mobility page, this environment has two applications. The Windows 365 user cannot be part of both. So if Microsoft Intune is set to all, the second option, Microsoft Intune enrollment, must be set to none. Or if each application is set to some, Users can only be added to one application scope. This next step is optional, but may be handy. We can create a filter for Windows 365 link devices in Intune. If you'd like to set that up, go to the Intune portal, Tenant Administration, Assignment Filter, Create, Manage Devices. Give it a name, Windows 365 link devices, for example, and you can add a description. For the platform, Select Windows 10 or later, and then Next. For the filter, set the property to Operating System SKU. The operator is equal, and the value is WCPC Windows CPC 210. It shows the rule. 
We could also preview that filter. My environment though doesn't have any cloud PCs or link devices added yet, so nothing would show. We'll go next to review and create, then select create. One last item before we sign in. We need to enable SSO on the cloud PCs. The easiest way to do this is by selecting the enable SSO box in the provisioning policy. However, keep in mind that enabling this setting will only take effect on newly provisioned or reprovisioned cloud PCs. Existing cloud PCs will not get that update. Now that we have the environment configured, let's log into the cloud PC. This is a screen capture from the link devices video output. We're watching the link devices first boot. I'll cut out some waiting time to speed things along. At the first prompt, we have to enter Wi-Fi settings. Be sure to select connect automatically. I missed that step. It has to connect to the internet to work. And then we have the license agreement. Of course, read that important information and click next if you agree. Now we sign in. This is a user account that has all the licensing applied, including the cloud PC, and the user is a member of the group that can auto enroll in this tenant. The device is set up once we log in. This is the first login, so some items need to be configured before we get to the desktop. MFA isn't enabled right now. Be sure to subscribe and watch for upcoming videos to learn more about enabling MFA. Now it's taking us to the desktop. We're going to jump ahead. It did take some time for the initial login to the cloud PC. This is normal for the first login. The user's profile has to be set up for the user. And now we're logged in. That was easy to set up and should not be a problem for users to figure out. Let's log out, shut down the device, and log in again to see the second login experience. Restarting the device gives us a sign-in prompt. It tells me I need to connect to the internet to sign in. Let's go into network settings and connect to the network. This time, I'll select the option to connect automatically. That should prevent that message the next time I log in. We can finish the login, and it takes us to the desktop. This time it was much faster. That is the user's experience logging in for the first time. That's an overview of how to configure Windows 365 Link and what that first login experience is like. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more Windows 365 content. Thanks for watching.